Hey there, earlier this year we were going over matrix decompositions and I got the idea from a, from a syllabus from a uh, university course on numerical methods for finance. And we had done LU decomposition, I believe we did SVD decomposition, and someone asked me around that time to also go over Cholesky decomposition. And so I'm going to do that in this video. So it's very similar to LU decomposition in terms of finding the, the solution to a system of linear equations, but perhaps more useful for people interested in computational finance is you can use it to pr produce uh, data series that, are, that have some sort of statistical correlation between them. So in this video, I'm going to quickly go over the solution to the linear system of equations and then probably spend a little bit more time on creating correlated data series. So let's just jump into it. Okay, notebook. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, the only time I've used Cholesky in my professional career was uh, building something called uh, unscented Kalman filters. It kind of has a, uh, a funny name there. But uh, anyways, uh, the only thing that we need for this is NumPy, uh, so the decomposition is part of the linear algebra package, and we will pull in from scipy.linalg the functions chofactor and chosolve. So what I'm going to do is just build out this notebook in kind of a, a piecemeal way, since a lot of this is pretty basic and you can just find it on Wikipedia. Okay, so the idea behind the Cholesky factorization is you can decompose a matrix A that is symmetric and positive, positive definite into two matrices, L and its transpose L, well, L transpose, where L is a lower triangular matrix. And as an example here, and we'll do this with code in a bit, I have a symmetric matrix. Notice that all these numbers are kind of reflected about the diagonal. So if we go to like the second, first row, second, third row, first column, we have a 1.59. 1.59 here, kind of uh, reflected about that diagonal. And we can decompose that matrix such that we get two matrices here. This one is lower triangle, lower triangular, uh, so it's non-zero on the diagonal and below, and zeros everywhere else. And of course, this transpose is just, obviously the transpose is just going to be an upper triangular matrix. So right away, you can kind of see the uh, connection with LU decomposition. So let's build this out in code. I am going to set a constant random seed and generate a 5x5 five five matrix that should basically be this matrix to a higher, higher degree of precision. So there's our matrix. Let's run it and make sure there are no issues. Seems good. Let's print it out. Print A. So we have 0.47 uh, is the first element here, and 0.47, uh, 0.4, 0.43, what do I have down here? Ah, damn it, they seem to be different. Um, no big deal. I thought I had chosen this uh, random seed uh, in my test code, and then I copied the matrix, but obviously I copied the wrong, wrong matrix. So let's just uh, get rid of this print. A. Let's uh, redo this and round it to four uh, decimal places. So this is our matrix. Uh, let's do a decomposition of it. Let's get L and L. Um, we'll, we'll get L, and then we can multiply it by its uh, transpose, and hopefully we'll get back this ori original matrix, which we called A. So down here, let us say L. That's going to be our lower triangular matrix. And the function is in our NumPy Lin algebra package, and it's called Cholesky, not surprising, A. So let's just print out A. Uh, let's put another space here. Print, print A. Oh, what happened? Oh, the matrix is not positive. The reason is, and the reason that this matrix, uh, yeah, this matrix is not symmetric. Ugh, I feel kind of dumb now. So let's just redo this. A is equal to A times a t. So I'm just going to take it, take the matrix and multiply it by its transpose. That should give us this matrix here, point, uh, 4.3, 0 0.094. What do I have up here? Ah, okay. I thought I had gotten that right, but I forgot this. This just makes it a symmetric matrix. Um, obviously, a matrix times its transpose is going to give you back a symmetric positive definite matrix. Um, so, okay, we do our, tra our, our Cholesky transpose, I mean de decomposition, and I printed out the wrong matrix. It's hopefully this whole uh, video is not going to go this way. So there's what our decomposition looks like. So let's just make sure that if I take this 
this uh, matrix down here and multiply it by its transpose, I get back this matrix here. So let us, uh, let's just copy this whole line here for the rounding purposes. And I don't really care about printing out the decomposition right now. So print L times L transpose. And indeed we get back the same matrix. Not terribly surprising. So what I'm going to do is um, create a vector uh, B, which is going to be our vector of knowns in a linear system. So uh, this is going to be our B uh, vector. So we're going to solve a linear system AX equals to equal to B. So down here, let me make this a markup cell. And I'm just going to kind of type out the procedure uh, using here. Let me actually print out B print B. So you, this will be our, uh, where's my cursor? This will be our A matrix and it's a lowercase b. Oh my God. And this is our vector of known. So let me type out the procedure down here. So uh, our example equation is this. So we have our, our symmetric matrix times a column vector of unknowns is equal to our B vector, our vector of knowns. The way to solve it is pretty simple. And this basically is very, very similar to LU decomposition. We do our Cholesky decomposition. So this A is equal to L times L transpose. This is L, this is L transpose. Now, because this is unknown, I don't know what the product of this uh, this is here, this, this transpose matrix times our X's, but I do know that it's a column vector. So I'm just going to call this column vector X tilde. So now I'm going to rewrite our uh, matrix equation like this. So this is our L matrix X tilde, and that's equal to uh, this, uh, our vector of knowns. But this is pretty easy to solve because like this first row here, X tilde one, well, that is just equal to this value here, minus 0.4 something divided by two point something. So we know what X1 is, but now that we know X1, we can calculate X2 um, because, you know, we can plug in our X1 here, uh, subtract this out over to the other side and divide through by, by 2.6-ish. We get X2 and then we go to X3, X4, and X5. Um, basically the same as solving an LU decomposition problem. Uh, but now that we know our X tilde, we just plug in the definition of X tilde here and we kind of repeat the process, but going backwards. In this case, we know uh, X5 is going to be X tilde 5 divided by 0.506. And then we plug it in here and solve for, you know, we go backwards X, X4, 3, 2, 1. So to code this up, um, it's done for us in SciPy. So we don't actually have to... Uh, to do this. So we can use the uh, functions defined in the uh, kind of the preamble to this, the troll factor and troll solve functions. Let's first of all just kind of brute force it. So let's say x1 is equal to np dot dot solve um, a comma b. So that's our solution. We're just brute forcing using the uh, the built-in solver in our linear algebra package. So now let's say um, We'll call it L for lower triangular is equal to um, Cho, Cho factor, Cho factor, not Cho factor, A, and I'm going to set a flag lower is equal to true. You can have this uh, return either a lower or upper matrix. So the upper triangular matrix would be the transpose of the lower. Um, some code like MATLAB actually returns the upper by default. So I just want to make sure we're doing the lower because that's what I did in the um, in the um, kind of the, the write up for this. So now let's call our solution x2. That's going to be equal to cho solve. I keep wanting to type cho, cho, cho solve um, L and B. So we pass in our Cholesky information and our vector of knowns, and that's going to be X2. So let's just print X2. Let's make sure this actually runs. Yes, it does. And um, let's go up here and print X1. Hopefully we'll get the same uh, results. So the first element, 1419, 1419, looks uh, 
good. Let's just check it explicitly. Let's do an np dot all close um, x1 comma x2. True. Not surprising. Okay, let us move on to generating correlated random variables. So what I think I'm going to do is first set a, a new random seed. Um, I want to, let's just set it to 18. I want to just show the procedure uh, first and then kind of talk through the uh, explanation as to, to why it works. Now suppose we have two random vectors. Let's call them x and here, we'll just do X and Y, and I'll call them capital. Uh, uh, blah. Uh, our capital letters will represent the whole collection of each uh, random variable. And so I'm going to create a, a million uh, length vector X, million length vector Y, and I'm just going to look at, I'm just going to print out here np.cov for covariance, uh, X comma Y. So as you can see, uh, pretty much these are all mean zero standard deviation of one. So obviously the variance here along the diagonal is essentially one for this, uh, these two vectors and the off diagonal terms, the, the covariance between the two is essentially zero. Now suppose I want the covariance to be, I don't know, 0 0.5. So let me comment that out and let's create a covariance matrix called C and we will make it um, like this. So print C. So obviously the uh, variance, the, the variance of each individual one is going to be one and the covariance hopefully should be 0.5. Now how can we create this? Again let's comment this out. And for the sake of the matrix multiplications what I'm going to do is reshape my x and y to be row vectors. So they're explicitly row vectors, one row uh, whatever the number of columns, in this case a million, um, is going to be. And then I'm going to create a matrix XY that's just going to be NP dot uh, V stack X comma Y. Okay. And, and so the procedure is going to be, we're going to find the lower triangu triangular matrix of our co uh, covariance matrix C. So NP dot we're in Elg, uh, dot Cholesky, C, and I'm going to create, this is going to return another, um, another like two stacks of row vectors. So I'm going to call these um, U and V. So the combined matrix is going to be UV. Each individual one will be U and V. Hopefully this will be clear in a second. Is equal to L times our matrix XY. Does this run? seems to. So let's extract U and V. So U of course is the zeroth row, V is the uh, first row, one row, whatever you want to call it. And let's just print out NP.cov U comma V. So hopefully it should be basically one on the diagonal and the off diagonal should be 0.5. And that's what we get to within some statistical uh, noise here. One's on the diagonal, 0.5s on the off diagonal. So why the hell does this work? So let me come down here and make this a markdown cell and kind of do a little bit of explanation. Okay, so I'm not particularly happy with this write-up. Uh, I am going to upload the notebook, of course, to GitHub, um, but I need to head out of town as soon as this goes live, so I will probably not kind of fix this. I think this is kind of clunky um, until I get back in maybe 10 days or so. But this is basically here. We have two uh, normally distributed uh, random variables x and y, so mean zero, standard deviation of one. We can write the covariance as the expectation of uh, x times y transpose, and if these two vectors happen to be the same, that covariance is essentially just the variance, and that's just equal to one, and if they're different, it's equal to zero. And this is just a basic, basically a fancy way of saying if you have a ton of vectors, the covariance is the identity matrix. Again, it means zero standard deviation of one. So suppose we want to have a covariance matrix uh, C and we can do the, the LU decomposition here. So C uh, can be decomposed into LL transpose. Now consider what happens if you have two random variables uh, stacked uh, it could be more than two but, but your bunch of normally distributed uncorrelated random variables in V 
then we want to construct a matrix u such that u is l times v. What is the covariance of this resultant matrix u? Well, u u transpose can be written like this. Uh, it's the expectation of l uh, v times the transpose of l v again. And of course, you can kind of distribute through. Um, this is just linear algebra. You flip the, the order and transpose both of them. So this is equal to the expectation of L V, V transpose, L transpose. Now expectation is a linear operator, so we can pull the L out to the left and the L transpose out to the uh, to the right. Remember order matters here. This is matrix uh, manipulation. So we have L, um, the expectation of V V transpose and um, L transpose. But this here, we just said, it's the same vector, uh, uncorrelated vectors. So this is the identity matrix. So we just get back, um, I need to put an I in here. I. And of course, that just multiples I times L transpose is just L transpose. So we get back uh, L L transpose. And this, again, is just equal to our covariance matrix. So that's kind of why this works. Um, yeah, I need to clean up this uh, section here um, eventually because I don't really like the way this, this explanation flows. But in case you need to uh, use this in the near future, this is kind of how you go about doing it. So yeah, that is about it. Outstanding. Uh, not that difficult. Uh, if, any of, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And until next time, see you later.